chose these images of Monet's cathedrals because I really think of them as a timekeeper, that they're actually like a clock. And this is something, you know, with an artwork, when you see it in its own time, it has meaning. But really, what's important to me is this idea of, over time, how that meaning changes. This idea of seeing a photograph in motion, of seeing not one photograph, but a photograph as it changes over time. All of us as photographers now are holding cameras in our hands all the time. We have this experience constantly of seeing photographs in movement and the photograph being much more filmic again, that the photograph is really returning, I think, to this, this image in motion. And so you have this unbelievably contemporary, on so many levels, and we know this, this series very well, obviously, and so many levels, this contemporary series of works. But now we see them in the context of actually, I think, how we are, again, seeing images, which is constantly in movement, and really thinking about images as this kind of clock. You, know, you see, obviously, the time of day and how the time of day changes over these series of paintings, and that you're really standing in one place, and nature and time around you changes. It's also interesting in this case, differently than with the haystacks, he chooses something with this kind of monumentality and this kind of authority, and he takes it, and actually over the series, not only does he use the light to change the time, but he also shows how time actually creates this kind of disappearance of the solid, of the monumental, and in this case, you know, obviously this building that in every way represents monumentality um, and stability, and he actually disintegrates it over time. One of the things that I think is very interesting to come to La Musée d'Orsay right now is because we have so many images around us, and it reminds us, I think, um, wh what an image, uh, what a photograph can do and what a painting can do. Um, and also to see the merging of those two mediums and how they affected each other. When you look at the, this first image, it's the closest to a kind of photographic representation. And obviously, as it progresses, he does many things by breaking down what a painting can do. Actually, how the eye actually works, how the eye perceives light, perceives color, in a much more complex way than a photograph can ever really capture even though there are many, many hots and colds and warms. But tonally, you could imagine it the cl most closely to the way a, a photograph would represent actually a building. But he also cr creates this, like, plays with the idea of architecture in that he plays with it as a facade. He um, takes away its gravity. So in this, because you have the most raking light and you have the most darks and the shadows, you have the most solidity of it as an actual object or a sculpture, as a sculptural form. But as we pass through and as the light changes, the color and the impressions and the sense of being there takes over this kind of trying to describe physicality in this more sculptural way. And you see, as you move towards these paintings in this series, you see how the, the light that really our perception of any object, no matter how monumental it is, really is actually all about the weather, the time, the light, the moment that you see it in. And you see how it evolves. And it becomes almost sculptural in that the world around you moves, right? You're in one place. And it, you actually, the time around you moves, which is actually always happening, you know, as, even as we go through this film and I move sideways, that you're always caught in a narrative, even in a static frame, even in a, in, even in a, in a view into uh, onto a solid building. Um, and so you come and, and it, you know, at this point, uh, particularly when you get close, also in terms of scale, which is also this thing about this building being this kind of monument, which also is interesting in, in juxtaposition to the haystacks, where you have a very different compositional space. The building as a structure completely disintegrates and starts to disappear. And then when you get to this last one, it's really, it's really barely, it's really about paint itself. In my, it's really about color itself. And in some ways, it's really the most, obviously, the most realistic. Because in this very, very modern way, it tells us what is happening with your eyes, that you're actually looking at paint, that you're actually looking at blue, that you're actually looking at ultramarine, that you're actually looking at sienna. And it puts much more of the work in the eye of the viewer, and the eye of the viewer to make a picture and reminds you that all of these are really Im impressions and that we are doing the work to create these spaces. And it's really a collaboration between the artist and the viewer to make this become an image. This is something I'm really interested in my own work also, is this idea of, thing, of things coming together and creating 
a kind of solidity, but at the same time, they're dissipating all the time and disappearing in space. So you see this across this it constantly in movement. And you can actually go forward and backward. And actually, it's sort of interesting to end in the middle. Because for me, what's interesting is when you're in the state of always becoming and disappearing, of, you know, of entropy and formation, of life and of death, and that you're very, very aware of the present moment. So a great timekeeper piece always makes you suddenly aware that you're present, uh, you're a human being in a very specific moment in time. And a great artwork, actually, its meaning, I think, changes um, with the audience and the growth of the audience and the zeitgeist of the time. And so in a, in a place like this, you find some of the most contemporary work you'll ever find.